it's about to get real. All right, you asked for it. Today, I'm going to be unboxing a $4,600 laptop from HP called the HP ZBook Fury 15 G8. All right, so here's the laptop. As you can see, it comes in a rather large box. And in fact, it is a very large box. Let's start by opening this outer slip. Okay, so the packing materials here come with a list of exactly what the uh, HP ZBook includes, um, which is actually really convenient. So it has a Core i7 8 core processor. Uh, it only has 8 gigs of RAM, but I will be upgrading that to 32. Uh, it has, let's see here, it has a terabyte of hard drive storage, which I will be replacing with SSD storage, but getting the hard drive was the cheapest option. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5, fingerprint sensor, and NVIDIA RTX A3000 with 6 gigs of dedicated video memory. Alright, let's take this thing out. It's very, very heavy. Alright, so this right here is a 200 watt power brick, and you will get this power brick no matter how high of a configuration you get. The lower end versions of the same computer will have a 150 watt power brick, and no matter how high you configure it, even if you go to the Core i9-11950H and the uh, RTX A5000 GPU, you will still get 200 watts, which I think is the primary mistake of this computer, but I will get to that a little bit later. Uh, I also want to note that mine came with this accessory. This right here is basically a hard drive enclosure. What this does is it allows you to house your hard drive or SSD, your 2.5 inch uh, SSD, into this uh, enclosure and stick it into the laptop. The laptop has up to four NVMe SSDs and a maximum of four SODIMM slots. So in theory, you could have 128 gigs of RAM in your laptop if you wanted to. If you want error-correcting RAM, you will have to buy the Xeon CPU, uh, and you will also need to get, uh, well, you can only go up to 64, you can't go all the way up to 128 if you want ECC RAM. Okay, so here's the laptop. It's very big and very heavy. As you can see, it is thick with three C's. This is not something you're probably going to want to tote around with you, but with that said, compared to a desktop, it is quite a bit lighter and more manageable. So this particular unit also has the highest end screen option. It is 4K HDR. It is what HP calls their dream color display technology. This screen actually goes up to right around 600, 630 nits, peak brightness. The back of the device has a lot of ventilation, as you can see. It's very thick. And then there are ports, uh, a bevy of ports, all over this thing. This is not, this is kind of like the anti-MacBook Pro. Not the newest one, perhaps, but certainly this one has more ports than you can shake a stick at. So on, let's see here, the left side, there is two USB Type-A ports, a micro Kensington lock slot, a gigabit Ethernet port, and a smart card reader. And on the other side of the device, there are two Thunderbolt 4 USB Type-C ports, the barrel pin power connector, mini display port, full-size HDMI 2.0B, and a full-size SD card slot. The thing to note about the SD card slot is that you can actually stick the SD card all the way into the device. No part of the SD card will be sticking out, like on the new MacBook Pro, for instance, uh, which is incredibly convenient if you have a project. Let's say you're a high-end wildlife photographer, and you need to go on the road and actually edit all those photos and sort them. You can just leave the SD card in your computer, slide it down into your laptop bag, without worrying about snapping the SD card in half. All right, I'm going to talk about the upgradability and expandability of this device in just a moment. But first, I want to let you know that if you like fantasy of any kind, this is a contemporary fantasy book. 
called Solomon Grando vs. the Jupiter Witch. Uh, it is about a vampire named Solomon who must save the world by preventing an epidemic from becoming a pandemic. So, in fact, very timely. Uh, it's got action, comedy, a lot of drama. It's a really fun, really exciting book with a lot of amazing characters. You will like this book, Solomon Grando vs. the Jupiter Witch. It's on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Check it out in the link in the video description. Okay, so this device is extremely expandable. It is very easy to get into it. In fact, I'm not aware of any other laptop that isn't from 2005 that is this easy to get into. You take this little latch right here, flip it over, all the way over, and then pull forward. Once you open it up, you can see that there is a lot of upgradability options that you have here. Uh, there is two RAM slots uh, easily accessible with, I believe, one screw. And then there's an SSD slot, a PCIe NVMe, that is accessible with one screw as well, with its own uh, included metal sort of heat plate. And then the battery on this thing is extremely easy to remove. It's, it's as simple as just unclicking two little latches, and you can pull the whole thing out. No screws needed. Right here is the WN cellular card that is optional. Uh, and over here is the socketed Wi-Fi card, which is also optional. Uh, most of the time, Wi-Fi card will just come in the computer, but because this is a mobile workstation, you don't necessarily have to include it if you don't want to. First off, this hard drive is actually a lot slower than I thought. When I, Because the operating system was on here when I bought it, it was a pretty slow experience actually trying to boot up the computer and certainly to do any video editing and animation. So be very careful. If you buy this computer, I would highly recommend buying it with an SSD or putting an SSD in it so that you can have a quick, snappy operating system where it'll make all the performance look worse than it actually is. There's two more RAM slots in this computer as well. Those RAM slots are underneath the keyboard. So in order to get to them, you'll have to pry up the keyboard. And in order to do that, you'll unscrew one, two, three screws, and then you'll take maybe like a, a Phillips head or something small, and you'll push it through this hole right here, and that will allow you to push up on the keyboard and very carefully remove it. You will need to undo a couple of ribbon cables in order to do that. So I would recommend specking the computer, um, the primary RAM slots and SSD slot as you want them when you purchase it. And for those of you wondering, this is a 94, I believe 94 watt hour battery. So it's close to the legal limit that you can take on an airplane. So that is really nice. That's going to give you... Uh, the best battery life you can get. Uh, don't expect this to last for hours and hours and hours if you're doing anything more than watching Netflix because even though the battery is quite large, uh, you're still having to deal with just the insane horsepower. However, there are solutions you can use to help with battery life issues. The main one is the display. So displays eat up a lot of battery life if your GPU and CPU aren't. So this display is 4K resolution and that's 120 hertz. And I know that a lot of you in the comments are going to ask this, so I'm going to answer it now very clearly and concisely. No, this is not a gaming laptop. I would not recommend this for gaming of any kind. It just does not have the horsepower uh, for gaming. Uh, it's going to cost you way, way more than my recommended gaming laptop from HP, the HP Omen 17T. My biggest problem with this device is definitely the power brick. It is 200 watts, which of course is good, but the problem is that no matter how high you configure this, you can't get more than 200 watts. And I know that the competition, like Lenovo and Dell, they have workstations with 240 watt power bricks, and HP's highest end gaming laptop, the 17T, which I highly recommend y'all check out. Uh, that comes with a 330 watt power brick, which is enormous. So if any of you are looking for raw horsepower, just the absolute maximum for the laptop, actually this isn't it. However, the reason people would buy this device is for video editing, animation, and especially CAD work and designing and simulation. The uh, drivers and certifications that this comes with are essential to those people. The stability of this platform, the rigidness of the chassis, the uh, full support from HP, 
for um, enterprise customers is extremely valuable, and that's what makes this computer worth what it is. It's not just that it looks nice or it has an i7. It's that it comes with a lot of built-in security and support and features that professionals are looking for. So the speakers on this device are quite good, and for something that's over an inch thick, you'd think it would be. Uh, I'm not an audiophile expert, but what I can tell you is that the speakers are loud, they're crisp, and the bass in particular is quite thumpy. It has a really nice sound to it. Um, I don't know that it'll beat the newest MacBooks, but I think this will be more than enough for business professionals, and of course there's an audio jack if you need it. Uh, as for the screen, it is not OLED, it is HDR, however. It is HP's patented Dream Color technology. It features 600 nit peak brightness, Ultra HD resolution, and of course 120 hertz smooth refresh rate, and in fact it is buttery smooth. The blacks are still relatively deep, even though they aren't quite as deep as OLED would be, certainly. And the colors are certainly rich and vibrant. However, if you want to use this for professional work, I would highly recommend purchasing something like an x right calibrator to make sure that the colors are as accurate as possible. Uh, the chassis, the chassis here is very, very thick and very, very firm. Like, I'm pushing down very, very hard on this, and I'm not getting a whole lot of anything. Uh, the keyboard is very nice. There's a good amount of key travel. It has a nice click. Um, it is a little bit soft, and of course, I think the reason for that is because the idea is that HP wants this to be a quiet keyboard, something where you're not clacking away and disturbing everyone around you. I personally actually do, do like a keyboard that's a bit louder with a bit more click. The trackpad is a bit on the small side. I wish it was a bit bigger, but HP makes up for this in large part with all the buttons that it has. So there's two sets of buttons that both basically do the same thing. The bottom set is for if you're using the trackpad, and the top set is if you're using the little included nub. So there's a little nub similar to the Lenovo ThinkPads right here that allows you to move the cursor around in a really quick and convenient fashion. The bezels on this thing are much, much better than the G5 and uh, G6 models of this computer. Uh, with the G7, HP uh, redesigned the computer to look like this, which I think was a great idea. However, the bezel on the bottom is still quite big, and I really wish they would copy what Dell did with the XPS 15 and 17 and replace it with uh, all display. So it would become a 16 by 10, or if we're lucky, 3 by 2 aspect ratio display, which I think is ideal for content creation. So there is a 720p webcam right here. It uh, is not the greatest quality. Uh, I really think that for a device this expensive designed, in particular for business professionals, it should have a uh, 1080p camera at the very least. It is a little bit underwhelming. Uh, I think it handles this situation well, but I am under professional studio lighting, so I'm sure that is helping it. Anyway, overall this device is very, very nice. It is not for gamers, but if you are anyone else who needs a lot of horsepower, this is the device for you. I think that it is a wonderful device and a relatively future-proof device as you can upgrade a number of important components, including upgrading it to Wi-Fi 6E. That's an option you have as well. Uh, it is not lightweight or thin, but uh, people who need to get real work done oftentimes don't want or need lightweight and thin. They just need something that isn't a desktop that they can take with them. In terms of CPU performance, it's very desktop-like. Uh, it has an i7 8-core, and in Cinebench R23, it was able to get around 12,089, and you may get even a little bit more, depending on the cooling solution. This has the vapor chamber. I have a friend who has a desktop Ryzen 9 5950X, which is a beast of a CPU with 16 cores, and that one scored about 24,000. So for this to have roughly half the score of a 16-core desktop CPU is rather impressive. In fact, it suggests that these cores, the eight, the eight that are in here, are similar in terms of per-core performance as that desktop chip. It's just that it has half the cores. 
So I'm very excited to, be, to see what I will be able to do with this laptop in the next few weeks. My name is Andy Silvers, and I will see you in the next video.